Hello folks and greetings from my home in Kingston Park to wherever you happen to be worshipping today. The risen Christ is with us. His Spirit unites us and the love of God is at work among us even in these tough times. Welcome to the folks watching from the congregations I serve at St Andrews Benton, Westmore and Cox Lodge and also a big welcome to folks from further afield who are joining our online community. It's great to have you with us. Let us pray together. In the chaos, before anything was, Lord, you spoke, bringing life in abundance. We praise and adore you, God of life. In the darkness of an early morning garden and the dank coldness of the tomb, Lord, you spoke, bringing resurrection, defeating death and giving us abundant life. We praise and adore you, God of life. In the dark places of our lives, Lord, you speak and bring recreation, transformation, and call us to life in abundance. We praise and adore you, God of life. God of abundant life. You have called us to be your people and to walk in your way. But there are times when we wander away, when we close our ears to your call and our eyes to your life. We remember those times before you. Take all we have been and done and all we have left undone and transform it through your love and grace. Open our ears to your words of forgiveness and our eyes to your glory. May we hear the words, your sins are forgiven and know their truth. Amen. I wonder how many of you trust that what I'm about to tell you is true. I have here on the windowsill a bowl of water and an ordinary paper clip. What if I was to say to you, I can make this paper clip float in this bowl of water? Now, normally, paper clips will just sink in water. They are not known for their floating qualities. But even so, I tell you, I can make this paper clip float. Some of you might believe me, but some of you may be thinking, I'll believe that when I see it. Well, that's something to think about as we hear our Bible reading from John's Gospel, which tells the story of the risen Jesus appearing to Thomas, who for some reason wasn't with the other disciples when Jesus appeared to them. So I'm reading from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 24. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. 
Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Although the other disciples had told Thomas, we have seen the Lord, he just couldn't believe it. It sounded too good to be true. He couldn't just take their word for it. And he effectively says, I'll believe it when I see it. Which brings me to my amazing claim to be able to make a paperclip float. You really are going to struggle to believe your eyes with this. So there it is. I bet you can hardly contain your excitement, can you? The paperclip really is floating. I bet you never would have believed it had you not seen it with your own eyes. A week after Jesus appeared to the other disciples, Thomas is with them in the same locked room and the risen Jesus appears to them all and says, peace with you. And when he sees Thomas, he gently invites him to place his finger on the wounds in his hands and his side and to believe. He doesn't tell Thomas off for doubting. And I believe Jesus is equally patient and gracious and understanding with us in our doubts and fears. In fact, I think the nickname that Thomas has had over the years of Doubting Thomas is totally unfair because that is not his defining characteristic at all. Honest Thomas would be much more fitting. When others may also have been doubting, but perhaps pretending that their faith was solid, Thomas was honest. Wanting to move towards belief in the risen Jesus. And here it's Thomas who speaks the most important affirmation of faith in the whole of the Gospel of John. As he says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And I guess he's talking about people like us who haven't seen the physical resurrected body of Jesus with our own eyes, like Thomas eventually did. And yet there are other ways that we do see and experience the risen presence of Jesus with us today. When we see people showing God's love and kindness to others, when we see people showing care and compassion to others, even when they get no thanks for it. When we see situations that seemed hopeless being transformed. People and communities renewed. Relationships restored. Forgiveness shown. And when we experience the love and support and kindness that people offer to us, especially in difficult times. Can we see in that something of the presence of the risen Jesus? Are we really looking? Well, to test your powers of observation and concentration, I'm going to ask you in a moment to pause this video and play the video below entitled Selective Attention Test where all you have to do is count people passing basketballs to each other.
so, did you see the gorilla? You know, I've used that clip a couple of times with different congregations, and amazingly, on each occasion, about half the people did not see the gorilla. Why? Because they are so focused on the white t-shirts and the basketball. They don't see anything else. Even though their eyes take in the information, they don't notice. Are there things that we are not noticing in the midst of our current circumstances? Perhaps we're so focused on certain things that we just don't see where God is at work. Well, may God bless us with the capacity to notice the risen presence of Jesus in our daily lives and speak peace to us in the midst of our doubts and fears. As we respond to this challenge in worship, I'm suggesting that we sing a song by Paul Belosh, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. And you'll find a link to that below. So if you'd like to pause this video, sing along with the song video, and then return for some prayers, or you can sing the song later, whatever you prefer. Let us pray. Into the closed doors of this world, come Lord and speak your word of peace and life. We pray for all those who are afraid at this time. We pray for all those who are ill and for those who yearn for their health. We pray for those who are homeless and for those who struggle to feed themselves and their families. We pray for those who have lost their incomes or whose businesses are at risk. We pray for all those who offer care during this crisis, often putting their lives at risk to do so. We pray for our government and all the governments of the world, for business leaders and all who hold any power. We pray for those who feel voiceless and powerless. We pray for those situations that no longer make the headlines, for those suffering from conflicts, war and oppression, for those seeking refuge and those who have no place of safety. And as we offer all these prayers in Jesus' name, we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a final blessing. May the light of the resurrection shine on our way. May the peace of the resurrection hold us fast. And may the abundant life of the resurrection fill us and empower us. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us now and always. Amen.